under examination is on the overhead right there. And that is the area that will be uh, studied. There can be uh, additions or subtractions subject to the final approval of the uh, Redevelopment Agency Board. Uh, as you know, um, this will uh, help uh, effectuate the um, any uh, incentives uh, that may occur as a result of the Smith and Edwards that's looking to relocate or to expand to the former R.C. Willey uh, building. So with that, I'm open to any questions with regards to this uh, resolution, but it is just a, a document that initiates the pro uh, process at this time. Questions from the board? Thanks, David. Turn to the council for discussion on motion. Board member Burton. If there is no further discussion, I would ready to make a motion. That would be in order. Okay, I move to approve resolution 191, authorizing the preparation of a draft community development project area plan and benefit analysis and budget for the for community reinvestment project area one dash ninetieth south and Redwood Road shopping plaza. And I want to make sure that this includes the current map shown and not the one in the packet, so the one that goes all the way to 13th West. And I don't know how to describe that, but the current map instead of the packet map. Second. We have a motion by Board Member Burton and a second by Board Member McConaughey. Discussion to the motion. Let's vote. Board Member Anderson? Yes. Board Member Jacob? Yes. Chair Rolf? Yes. Board Member Burton? Yes. Board Member McConaughey? Aye. The vote passes five in favor. I need a motion to adjourn the redevelopment agency meeting and convene the city council meeting of July 12, 2017. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Board Member McConaughey, a second by Board Member Jacob. Discussion? There's no discussion. Let's vote. Board Member Burton? Yes. Board Member Anderson? Yes. Chair Rolf? Yes. Board Member McConaughey? Aye. Board Member Jacob? Yes. Vote passes five in favor. I call to order the July 12th, 2017 City Council meeting. First item is a pledge tonight that will be led by Eleanor Mitchell from Troop 290, the Girl Scouts. Will the audience please rise? And now will you please say the Pledge of Allegiance with me? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may now be seated. Thank you very much, Elmer. Mayor? Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. If I may ask for a quick point of personal privilege, um, before we start with communications, I would like to do, or like to, uh, I'd like to ask for a, a quick presentation, if the council would be okay with a quick presentation from Mike Wilson with the Healthy West Jordan Committee, giving us an overview of the uh, Linda Butters Memorial Fund Run. Anyone opposed to have a mic come up and address us? Mike? The mic is yours. I just wanted to come uh, give you a report on the recent Lynn Butters Memorial. Uh, as you know, this event was not held last year uh, due to some of the turnover within the committee. And this year, when we started it, we were doing so without having any prior experience doing it. Uh, so 
what we're doing now is tomorrow at our committee meeting, we will be uh, setting out a plan to be able to uh, prepare for this in the future so that we can make it more successful, uh, make it bigger, and more worthwhile to the city. Uh, this year, we actually did have a fairly good success rate. Uh, we had uh, about 175 participants. We had about 10% of those participating were those that can, were participants in our Healthy West Jordan Way to a Better Life uh, challenge at the beginning of the year. And we just wanted to come get a little bit of direction on what we can do from your opinion to set this up for next year. Uh, we enjoyed this year being able to partner with the Western Stampede and so we hope to do that again next year, but we wanted to get some input from you. Councilman Member McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. If I may start off, first of all, I want to say thank you very much for the work your committee put into hosting the fun run. Um, I personally think it worked better incorporating this with the events surrounding the 4th of July than it did as a standalone when we were competing with so many other things going on through the city. Uh, so number one, my personal opinion would be that we continue with that practice. Uh, number two, uh, we gave a, a fairly generous budget to host it this year, and we have allocated uh, roughly similar for next year. Um, I would like to see us make a little bit of a change to the pricing. And next year, I would like to advertise this as a run that is free to anyone who wishes to participate. If you wish to be timed and get a T-shirt, $5 per person. Um, there's enough in the budget that should should allow to cover that. Having people just run the same course that's already been set up should be minimal expense to the city, maybe a little bit more on uh, refreshments and snacks afterwards. So um, those are those are my two thoughts. And I would ask if the council is uh, supportive of giving that as official direction to the committee. And uh, I just want to thank you after having that taken away from the city and then brought back it's a hard thing to regenerate the and you did a fabulous job uh, I had really fun running it and the t-shirts were awesome uh, the refreshments for those who participated were awesome as well so I don't know other than what uh, Councilmember McConaughey suggested I don't know that you could do much better than what you did so thank you very much okay. any other questions about the event or any other things you wish my committee to know Council Member Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to say as well, well done. Um, I've run a lot of 5Ks and a lot of uh, races, um, not so much lately, but back in the day. Um, and I think it's a great idea. Uh, to have a free event for the, for the public would be awesome. Uh, I don't know of any free 5Ks, so that's, that'd be great. I'm wholeheartedly in support. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Our, our good city recorder reminded me that, or clerk, excuse me, clerk recorder, you do both all the time, so I have a hard time keeping straight which hat you're wearing at the moment. Um, she pointed out that this was noticed as an electronic meeting, and our code does permit uh, members to participate electronically if there's a vote by the majority of the council to support that. So before we go much further, I would move that uh, we allow participation of Council Member Nichols uh, through electronic means for this meeting. Second. We have a motion by Council Member McConaughey, and I assume you stated to suspend the rules for that item? Not necessarily to suspend the rules because our rules, within the rules, it does say that it is permitted. It just has to be on a vote of the council. So we're not necessarily suspending the other rules that are there, just allowing for this built-in mechanism. In the past, historically, we've said suspending the rules after our conversation a couple of meetings ago where we were all under the impression that that suspends all the rules. I did a little bit more homework and found that um, it seems like it, it's just the the vote of the majority the vote of the majority of the council will allow it without necessarily suspending any of the other rules that govern the the flow of the meeting okay that's not how it's been explained to me so we have a motion by councilmember mcconaughey a second by councilmember jacob discussion to the motion
the discussion, I suppose, should be led with me asking for clarification. The motion to suspend the rules is only to what portion of our rules specifically? Is that something that should be relevant to the discussion? Are we talking about C.8, the electronic council meeting, and the limitations set forth in paragraph B? Um, is there is one way to certainly read the second paragraph indicating the meeting can be called for emergency to accommodate council members who are traveling outside the city on official city business or other unique circumstances that make such meeting in the public interest. If the discussion is we're suspending that rule altogether, then I guess that possibility of discussing unique circumstances may not be relevant. But if you have a council member who is serving a unique circumstance and you all agree it is a unique circumstance, then there's no reason for a vote. Does that make sense? You don't need to suspend the rules. The rules actually allow it. But if you're suspending the rules to allow participation, regardless okay. of that unique circumstance, I, that, that discussion can proceed. Okay, I, I see what's being, I, I see what you're saying now. Um, so in that case, I would move to the suspend the rules on page 31. So this is C8, section B to allow Council Member Nichols to participate electronically. There's the five bullets that state, mm -hmm. here are the limitations for the electronic meeting. I would move to suspend those rules limiting the electronic meeting to allow the participation. You second? He, yes, I will second that and speak to the motion when you are ready. Now discussion to the motion. Councilmember Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. I would, uh, whereas I do support the motion, I would also argue that the motion is unnecessary because I believe this is a unique circumstance. If nothing else, uh, it's council members traveling for work, and it's a leaves us with only five if he does not participate, which means only one dissenting vote would uh, be required, or only two dissenting votes would be required to defeat any motions, which. Uh, I think the more council members we can have participate in general, the better. And tonight with a, another council member missing, I would say makes it qualify as a unique circumstance, thereby uh, making the like, suspension of the rules unnecessary, in my opinion. Thanks. And I would disagree with that. I believe the rules are in place for a reason. We can uh, choose to change the rules if we choose to, um, um, but I will not be supporting the motion. Let's vote. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Councilmember Jacob? Yes. Councilmember Burton? No. Mayor Well? No. Vote fails three to two. Communications. City Attorney. Thank you, Mayor and Council. I would like to take the opportunity to sort of help explain why I have come to some certain conclusions when it comes to discussions or comments made from the pulpit. Uh, our rules indicate under C9A, citizen comments are to be encouraged. But within our own noticing requirement, we've also indicated that those comments should not include verbal attacks or being disrespectful during the proceedings. I generally just wanted to make it clear that being polite does not include yelling, short, uh, shouting, cursing, or attacking by swearing at any of our elected officials, department heads, or frankly anyone else in the community. So my efforts to limit any type of discussion from the dais is simply to sort of maintain that polite nature of which I hope democracy can evolve from. So I thought I would try to clarify exactly what I mean, meant by if someone wants to be up there and be a jerk, I'm not going to interfere with that right because I don't want to end up paying bills on limiting someone's First Amendment right. But I would like to support the council's decision if they think someone's being rude, condescending, uh, attacking someone, I will certainly work with the council to stop that. Thank you. Chief Diamond. 
Thank you, Mayor, Mayor, and Council. Um, and here in, in the stead of the city manager because he's not here. That's why I'm sitting on this side. Uh, but I wanted to um, thank, and, and we didn't have this scheduled as a, a formal presentation, but uh, Ms. Alexandra Framo uh, donated to the police department just tonight uh, $4,000 uh, to purchase ballistic vests for our canine uh, uh, dogs. And uh, I wanted to thank her publicly uh, for that. Uh, we did not have ballistic vests currently, um, but thanks to this donation, we'll, we'll make sure that that happens for our canines. Uh, and, and she did this in, in light of uh, the canine uh, police service dog, Dingo, from the U Unified Police Department uh, that was killed last week. And so uh, I appreciate her. Uh, I appreciate that donation to the, to the canine. She's uh, just for reference to... Uh, a few years ago, she donated $10,000 to purchase a canine uh, when one of our canines died. And so it's um, very generous of our community and especially uh, Ms. Aframo for, uh, for this donation. I'd like to thank her publicly for that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Scott? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Nothing tonight. David? Uh, just by way of information, uh, the Sparta Cup is going to be held at the soccer complex uh, starting tonight um, through Saturday. And so, as with all tournaments up there, there's uh, going to be congestion in the area. And so, if you get any calls, um, that's what's going on up there. And then also, Brian would like to pass along his thanks to Council Mayor for all the support um, through the Western Stampede celebration. Um, it was very much appreciated. Um, throughout that whole stampede, the support that you guys gave uh, to the stampede celebration. So thank you for um, from for the support from Brian. That's all. Thanks, Bill Piper. Uh, nothing tonight, Mayor. Wendell Rigby. Yes, uh, two weeks ago, the st uh, we requested that uh, 40th West be closed uh, for some work that we needed to do to the roadway. Uh, we just wanted to let you know that that work is completed, the in-house work is completed. There may be another uh, closure required once UTA gets uh, their their contractor on board to do in between the tracks, but it will be a short one. Thank you. Keith McElroy. Just one item tonight, Mayor, I wanted to make the council aware. Marty Whiteman, receptionist in our office that's been with the fire department almost 17 years, announced today that she'll be retiring in September. Marty's the one that answers most of the phone calls, greets you as you come into the fire station. So um, we're happy for her that she's going to enjoy retirement, but we'll be looking to replace her in the middle of September. Thank you. Thank you. David Oka. Yes. At the request of uh, the city manager, uh, he asked me to brief the council on a meeting that staff held with uh, representatives from Lewis Young uh, regarding the econo economic development review. And there are four primary uh, issues that were covered. One, we discussed uh, sales leakage, uh, and we reviewed that, and they'll come back addressing what they see as the issues, the reasons, um, and perhaps uh, some targeted, uh, I see you have a furrowed brow. Let me explain a little bit further. There has been some uh, sales leakage over the years. Uh, in West Jordan. We think that's primarily due to uh, online uh, shopping, Amazon, and some increased competition. So what we've asked them to do is come back with uh, some recommendations as to uh, which, what kind of um, businesses we should uh, pursue. Uh, second uh, point was that we have certain advantages and certain disadvantages Advantages, and they'll go through a, um, a list of those that are available to us. The third was that they will uh, look at an economic development plan, and we will do this and review this with the council in workshops. There will be probably two, maybe three workshops to go over these various issues. And the final step will be uh, an economic development plan approval by the, the council. So that is, in a nutshell, uh, what we discussed, and 
We figure that will take uh, maybe three months to complete. So that is my report. Thank you. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. I've got uh, a few. I just, number one, wanted to thank the Parks Department and everybody who was involved with the Western Stampede. Um, my family and I, we attended everything. We did the fireworks, we did the uh, rodeo, the carnival, the vendor booths, um, the breakfast, of course, and uh, I, just, I just thought it was well done and appreciate everybody's efforts. Uh, World-class rodeo, uh, as far as I'm concerned, a world-class parade. And uh, just want to th thank that. A couple other, uh, thank everybody for that. A um, couple other things, um, I've had a couple residents contact me about 7800 South, which I've communicated to Public Works, uh, specifically the intersection of 40th West and 38th West, and just the, the bottlenecks that we continue to have there on, on 78th. And then uh, if I could ask Wendell real quick on the 40th West closure, I had a gentleman call me today that was concerned about um, him, he not being aware that uh, 40th West was going to be closed. He said he saw a, a reader board on Saturday. It was gone on Sunday. Um, he didn't know it was closed. It affected his um, commute uh, because he, he didn't know. And I didn't know if we had... Uh, had different um, mechanisms to communicate the closure besides social media or the journal. Um, he, he brought up that 90th South signs or reader boards are still up, but uh, they didn't do anything in his mind for 40th West. We followed our typical process. We, we put the reader boards out and make sure that the, those who uh, travel that way know about it. and. I believe that uh, Kim also put it on the website. Okay. So I appreciate that, just, just to be aware. Um, and also, just lastly, I wanted to thank Alexandra for the donation for, the, for our police department. That's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. Councilmember Jacob. Thank you. Um, much of what Alan said is what I was going to Councilmember Anderson. Gosh, I'm not feeling well today, so if you'll pardon me if I'm a little informaler than usual. Um, I do appreciate the donation for the police dogs. That is wonderful. Thank you so much. Very generous. Um, wow, I'm, I'm a little bit blown away. That's well, well done. And I would also like to express my appreciation to the Parks Department and the event staff, uh, the Western Stampede Committee, everybody that, uh, that put efforts into the 4th of July celebration. Uh, from what I understand, it's as good as it's ever been. And, uh, and I appreciate that. Everything I was able to attend was, was, was absolutely uh, absolutely top notch. So it was that was great, and I, I appreciate the efforts of all involved. Uh, please pass along my uh, thanks, especially to Brooke and Ashley and the event staff. Um, very very well done, and that's all I have for right now. Thanks, Councilmember Burton. Thank you, Mayor. I'd also like to extend a thank you to Alexandra for that donation. We appreciate what you do for the city. I also want to welcome the Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts who are here with us today. Thank you for visiting us. Feel free to take a minute and share your thoughts with us. We'd love to hear from you. And I also want to extend my thanks to the events and parks and, and committees and everybody who made the 4th of July celebrations with Western Stampede a fantastic success. I understand we did some wonderful things and broke some records and had to a very good turnout so I also enjoyed my times there and afterwards I slept really good to catch up so it was fantastic thank you very much and uh, that's all I have for now. Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you Mayor. Uh, a number of items tonight. Uh, first, <laughs> please don't laugh at that list. <laughs> first of all a special heartfelt thank you to Alexandra um, for uh, the, 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 there's so many things. Um, this, for, for those who are here tonight, 
Um, we have a very interesting relationship with Alexandra. She is one of the most involved citizens you will ever meet. She is constantly here at City Council, keeping us on our toes. Every opportunity she has to speak during citizens' comments, she will share her thoughts and let us know exactly where she stands. Often we find ourselves in disagreement and she's pointing out the things that she, th she sees could use improvement. But at the same time, she's incredibly generous, incredibly caring. She's given for the vest for the police dog. She's given us a police dog. She's provided a number of other donations to the city. Um, thank you. There, my, I've never known anyone like you the five and a half years I've been on the council. So thank you, Alexandra. Uh, number two, I want to thank all of the staff that participated with the rodeo and the carnival and the parade and the family fun night and everything else that goes along with that. There were a lot of people um, who spent a lot of hours to, to really give the residents an opportunity to celebrate the independence of our nation. Um, a couple that I want to specifically point out um, with our events group, Brooke and Ashley spent a lot of time um, very little sleep for that time period and went above and beyond what, uh, what what anyone would have expected. This is their first time running this on their own. Um, we'd had some changeover in staff, so they were stepping into some pretty big shoes to fill, and they did a fantastic job. Um, I also want to thank the Stampede Committee for everything that they did. Without them, we could not have had a rodeo. And I uh, also want to point out Nate Gedge specifically for his efforts in uh, chairing everything that he did there. We have some fantastic, fantastic folks here in the city, that uh, both on staff and, and residents volunteering. A um, little bit of change of change of pace. Uh, Mr. Oka, you pointed out the furrowed brows when we talked about retail leakage. Uh, it, it wasn't so much because I was questioning the definition of retail leakage, but because just a few years ago we had a retail leakage study done by Zions Bank, which underscored the need, especially for auto dealerships, and that really helped us push in our effort to change the legislation to allow that. So we, we can talk more offline, but I just want to make sure that this new uh, study being done coordinates with the one that was done previously and built on top of that so that we're, we're, we're sure those two tie together. That, that was why the furrowed brow, trying to figure that one out. Um, now I've got a couple questions for council. Uh, number one, um, we're approaching, uh, we're about to get really quickly, really deeply involved in the design of a new arts facility. And we've talked about the need to go out to look for donors to help fund this. Is there any objection by the council to give staff direction to begin preparation of donor solicitation documents so we can start working with those various folks in the community to help uh, raise funds to match our tax dollars that are going for this? Okay, so that will be formal direction to relay back um, uh, Chief Diamond if you could get that back to our uh, city manager. Um, we need to start working on materials. Ideally, I'd like to have those materials ready to go um, so that we can start early to mid-August, have something ready to take out to potential, potential supporters. Um, number two, and this will probably come up later tonight, again, uh, going along with the review of some of our codes, obviously I missed, I, I didn't quite interpret the one correctly about the uh, electronic meetings. But one of, the, one of the items I did notice is, by ordinance, it says our meetings are to end by 9 p.m. unless there's a vote of the council to extend it. Given the frequency with which we extend, is there any objection from council if I work with our legal staff to see about a better way to address that and then bring something back to the council within the next three council meetings? I see no objection. I'll take that as an okay from the council for me to work with our legal department to fix that and clarify that. Um, next, uh, since it's a little bit too late to add anything to the agenda for tonight's meeting, um, I'm proposing that we have a special council meeting this coming Friday to discuss safety concerns regarding aerial fireworks. Um, there have been a couple incidents around the valley and I think we should have a conversation about whether or not we should uh, ban aerial fireworks or anything that goes over 15 feet for, for this year. Um, and, and Chief McElreath, could you could you share the conversation that we had earlier today to kind of get the background as to why I would propose this meeting? Sure. Um, on the 4th of July, uh, in 23 years, uh, this year was the first time that the number of calls 
outpay, outpaced our resources we had to respond to incidents in the city. Um, the 911 center, Valley Emergency Communications Center, between 9.30 and midnight, we're taking 288 calls an hour. And so if I bring that back to West Jordan, just on the 4th of July, we responded to 54 confirmed field fires, one of which um, cost caused $30,000 in property damage, which uh, that incident right now is being screened with the district attorney's office due to an aerial firework that uh, malfunctioned and, uh, and caused that damage. Um, so I, I don't know what it is this year about the aerial fireworks, but you have all the conditions seem to be just right with the number of people that have them, the conditions, hot, dry, our foliage is built up, um, and quite frankly, in 23 years, we we had we literally had fire trucks showing up on grass fires that neighborhoods had had gotten bucket brigades put together to put them out, and that is not a good situation for the firefighters to be in, nor is it a good situation for the public to be in when they're having to put out those those grass fires. You know, 15 minutes to to get there, and I promise you that we had all of our resources um, staffed up and ready to go, and we had South Jordan in our city. And so, as I say all this, I'm speaking about West Jordan, but we also were in we were in other communities as well, helping them. So this was a an event that overwhelmed Salt Lake County in general. Um, I think you heard about uh, in the news uh, there was a, actually a, a, res a home, single-family dwelling that got destroyed in Cottonwood Heights due to them. So um, I, I did speak with Chris. I would uh, like to have the opportunity to address you with more facts and, and about that. And, and I know I'm a little bit biased, obviously, as the fire chief. Um, and you, you should have an, an opportunity to weigh in, but I think it's my duty to also uh, make sure you're aware of the risks that are out there this year and what those risks are with aerial fireworks that go above 15 feet. Be glad to answer any questions. I, I would propose that we have a, since, since we can't add this to the agenda for tonight, we have to provide plenty of uh, at least 24 hours of public noticing. Um, I would propose that we speak about this since it's an imminent public safety concern on, on Friday. And rather than chew up time in the meeting calendaring now um, during the remarks time, I'd like to set a time for that meeting. But is there any opposition to having a special meeting on Friday? Councilmember Anderson? Uh, j just a quick question for Mr. Bricky. Um, the the 24-hour the notice for a public meeting doesn't have to apply if it's an emergency um, type thing, but I can't remember what the list of emergencies are. Uh, but we wouldn't be able to hear it tonight because I don't know that it falls under that, so I just want to get some clarification. I would agree. I don't believe this falls under. You're talking about a restriction in the sale of an item. I don't believe it falls under that allowance to justify the emergency meeting. Okay. I, but I certainly think you can give notice today of the intent to have the meeting on the Friday the 14th. Yes. Okay, I, I would be supportive. Beautiful. So we'll address the time during remarks. And then along with that, um, I mentioned earlier that we're moving ahead um, full speed with the, uh, well, I'll, I'll leave that one for you. Yeah. Um, let, me add, let me add one more item um, before I wrap up. Um, this Friday we've been invited uh, the council has been invited to an event with a large business here in West Jordan. In my conversations, it seems like four, possibly five members of the council were planning on being in attendance. Um, technically, we're able to meet like that if it's a chance social gathering, but at this where it's an, a, an invited, wow, that's not a word, <laughs> <laughs> an invited event, um, especially this facility I'm a little bit worried about um, because the general public's not able to get there. So I'm not sure if we could do this as a notice event because of the security concerns that they have. Um, I don't want to have even the appearance that we're in violation of an open meeting law. If there are a number of us that are gathered, if we do happen to start talking about city issues. Um, so I had previously stated that I would be going to the event. Given the number of people that have expressed an interest, um, I will not. Uh, further, 
I think we need to have some conversations with the council as to how to proceed when we receive a request or an invitation. Rather than specifically responding to the person or the entity who's putting it together, I think we should forward that invitation to the clerk, and then the clerk can forward it out, find out how many members of the council are going to be there, determine if it needs to be publicly noticed, determine if accommodations have to be made to allow the public to attend. Um, so I, I think that's something else that might need some further conversation. Um, and I'll hold my comments at that. Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Burton, did you have a question? I do, going along with what Councilman McConaughey was saying, if I may ask our attorney, Mr. Bricky. This social gathering, does it have to be a chance social gathering, or could it be a scheduled social gathering and still be considered a social gathering? The nuance is the word of the chance versus scheduled. Um, I've asked others that schedule events that if they're making the promise that they're scheduling the appearance of the city council, that certainly sounds like more than four, a city council in this instance of being seven individuals. If it's a request that council members have been given or the likelihood that council members have been invited, that sounds to me more like the likelihood of a chance. So I, I hate to mince words with you and not be more clear than that, but I, I just, I've been in those situations where in Summit County, there was an invitation to travel on a bus to the state line and the council got on the bus and there was a limitation of who could get on the bus and the judge determined that that was in fact a public meeting because all three council members were there. So um, if you're putting yourself in a restricted area where there's a limited number of seats or availability to the public to be able to join you, don't be surprised if the judge doesn't determine that was in fact a gathering of which you should have allowed others to be able to attend. Does that answer the question a little bit? I hope so. Is that it? I have a, a few items tonight before we go to citizens' comments. Uh, first, uh, the selection committee has determined a general contractor construction management company. And as we did with the architect, design architect, I would like to be able to allow them to be notified tomorrow and ratify the actual contract on Friday at the special meeting, if that's okay. If there's anyone opposed to that, just because of the expeditious nature that we're under on that. Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Just, just to clarify words, um, this coming Friday with that special meeting, not necessarily to ratify the, the specific contract, but uh, it sounded like that might not be ready to be presented to us on Friday, but a resolution saying, we authorize the mayor to approve a contract with the with the name party for up to a certain dollar amount so that everything can be in place. Yes, absolutely. I would support that and highly encourage that. Anyone opposed? Okay, we'll make that happen. Uh, Wendell, um, I'd like to request a CPM schedule for 70th South, a critical path method. Uh, schedule for 70th South with some milestones on it. I know we've seen this, the council has seen uh, CPM schedules, but there seem to be no milestones as to when the uh, surface will be put back and other certain milestones uh, scattered out for about two miles there. And I'd like to see some milestones put into that. If you could make that happen. And then uh, <clears throat> I too would, it's been said by every council member up here, um, the Western Stampede was the best ever by far in the 40 years I've been here. Um, every event I felt like was done spectacular. And I just, I tried to get to as many volunteers from the community that uh, donated their time and thank them, shake their hand. I know I missed many, but this doesn't come off without numerous volunteers at every uh, level. So I want to also express my thanks to those volunteers that helped Brooke and Ashley and uh, Brian and the other staff members that made it come off, uh, the volunteers that donated their time for the city events. 
We'll move now to uh, citizens' comments. I have two signed up to speak this evening. Kayleen Whitelock. Whitlock. Thank you, Mayor, Council members. I'm here tonight to ask you to ask Public Works or the traffic engineer to be cognizant of our neighborhood. Um, 90th South, 40th West, Bangor. A lot of construction going on, and when we come out of our neighborhood, we come out off of a hill and enter a very busy street, 9,000 South. And when the contractors that are working on the road put up signs, I don't think they think about where they're putting signs and what our vision will be when we're looking to try to get out onto that very busy road. Um, so if we could just help them to realize that's really important. I'm not sure, but it sure sounded like the last two days I've heard Rex as I've been out in my yard in the morning. And I'm only out there for a limited amount of time because it gets really hot. So we just, you know, we're going to be living with construction, having a hard time getting in and out of our neighborhood for, oh, just a couple years to make it better for the valley to travel Bangor Highway, which I get that, but don't forget us and our safety, please. Um, the other thing I want to say that what I didn't sign up for is, as a council as a whole, and my representative in particular, I'm very disappointed that you would not choose to be inclusive, but to be exclusive. Council Member Nichols represents everyone in our city because he's in it at large, and currently he has to work out of state. Not to let him participate via a means that we have that worked very well last meeting, is very disappointing to me. Thank you. Alexandra Ifremo. Excuse me. Ladies and gentlemen, may we pause for a moment to reflect upon our common goals before we begin the business of this meeting. We are privileged to gather here together in a system that gives us freedom to participate in our own governance, whether from within or through the strength provided by our personal faiths, we seek wisdom, understanding, fairness, and resolve in the fulfillment of our duties and in the pursuance of our goals. May our differences be respected and our common aspiration of promoting the public good be our guide in carrying out the tasks we are about to undertake. Thank you. And thank you, Chief Diamond, for acknowledging my gift, my passion for the canine dogs. And all the councilmen for complimenting me. It's a gift and it, uh, it's an honor, let's say that. It's an honor that uh, to participate, to know that I can donate something. I'm privileged to be able to do that. And Councilor McConaughey, thank you for that special remarks. I, I'm very passionate about government and uh, I'm a Russian and I say what I say and I know that many, many things go uh, <laughs> not to the benefit of a lot of other people. So. But uh, anyway, uh, but thank you all for your comments. I, I truly appreciate it. And I, as I say, I'm privileged. And I am a first generation Russian. My parents were born in Russia. So it truly is a blessing that I can get up every chance I get. And of course, I don't know, I don't miss too many three minute calls uh, that uh, come about. But uh, I, I really, really thank you. Uh, I was going to comment on something else, but I'm changing. What time on Friday are we going to have this meeting on the aerials of the, of the fireworks and where is it going to take place? Because I'll tell you, I'm scared to death. My yard, as you all know, is a, you're, I mean, is a desert lawn. Uh, it is dry. I do not water my lawn. And uh, I'm terrified at it. And I'm not sure of all the fire, uh, the, the fireworks. I think they're, they're not necessarily aerial fireworks. It's these people on the ground that are, that, that, that are working with their fireworks on the ground that cause the brush fires. I'm not sure I quite understood 
uh, Chief McElreath on this, but the details, I just wish they cut out all fireworks. I mean, on the ground and aerials and all of them. But it's just, anyway, I, I just would like to thank you. That's all that have signed up. Anyone wishing to speak during citizen comments? Uh, now would be the opportunity. You have uh, three minutes. Please state your name and address for the record. Jay Thomas, 1348 West, Barton Harbor Drive. Thank you, Council and Mayor. I want to thank personally Brooke and Ashley for all of their hard work. I've dealt with a lot of them in the last week or so with doing, putting on the Western Stampede and stuff, and they have put a lot of time and effort into that. And all of the volunteers that go into the celebration, which includes rodeo, parade, carnival. It takes many, many hours of hard work and dedication to make all of these events a success. And in my opinion, it was very much a success. Um, I do want to make mention of a couple issues that I did notice throughout, and it's mainly with some of our facilities. So I want to bring that to your attention. I'm sure some of you probably are already aware of this. Um, number one, the stadium needs some better identification on the um, stadium seating. Um, I want to even ask some of the ushers and stuff to find seats and try to help other people. They couldn't do that either. There's no markings on the, the seats as far as what rows, and uh, even on the seat benchmarks, it's really difficult to find your seats and stuff. So I would suggest that we put like little tags or some sort of markings on those so that you can actually identify the rows and the seats to make it a lot easier to find your seat. And number two, uh, maintain an ADA uh, environment for the, um, the box. Um, I observed um, the fire department did a wonderful job of escorting and helping a lady up into the booth. But if we're going to have a, a class facility, I think we do need to, to make some adjustments and, and make that ADA accessible to all individuals. If we're going to invite those type of people to, to come and... Uh, celebrate with us and we need to make that accessible. And then uh, for the carnival and, and the vendor booths, I talked to a whole bunch of people. I spent many, many hours in the park talking to a whole bunch of people. And one of the main themes that I got was consistency, make sure that we're going to keep this um, going on for the future so that we can encourage people to come out and visit us and participate in the carnival and stuff. I think that was one of the big things that people wanted is one year you have it, one year you don't. So they want to make sure that we are going to be steady and have that continually. I think that will help. And then just a quick thing about fireworks. <laughs> um, I want to echo some of the concerns. When I've been out campaigning and talking to a bunch of individuals, that was really a big concern right after the 4th of July. Being a former firefighter and having to work many 4th of Julys, and put out many fires because of the fireworks and stuff. It is a real concern, and I'll echo Chief McElroy's, um words too. I mean, that's not only is it property, but um, it's a life safety issue too. So anyway, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to address, please? Thank you, Mayor Rolf. Uh, Chad Lamb, 1434 West Highland Hollow Drive. I just want to speak tonight. I did notice that the uh, Colossal Project is uh, moving forward, and um, my biggest concern with the project from the beginning has been traffic around that area. Um, I just live off 1300 West, and already it's a traffic problem. I drive home on 78th every night through Midville. The uh, traffic is backed up almost to Midville, uh, past, the, past the river. So. As we're moving forward, this is going to be a good project. It's going to be an apartment complex that will be great for the community. However, if we don't have the traffic problem fixed when that thing opens, there will be a huge issue. Um, with 250 plus units, uh, there will be probably 250 plus cars going in and out of that. Uh, one of the things that we have, and I know Jay lives in that neighborhood as well, and we've talked about it, is we're worried about the traffic that flows out onto 1300 West from the back entrance. I don't know what the council can do to help out on that, but I do ask as a citizen, and as a neighbor of that area, if we can look to find a way to fix 1300 West before that apartment complex is done so that when those cars are emptying out onto that back road on 1300 West, that it won't be an issue where cars are backing up both ways, trying to turn left or trying to turn right into that complex. That's all I have tonight. Thanks. 
Anyone else? Uh, John George, 981 South Coppering Avenue. Um, just on the ordinance 1738, just with the new rezoning, um, other neighborhood pretty adjacent to that, and I think it's going to cause a, quite a bit of change, kind of cut off our neighborhood. I don't know if you've seen the map. There's kind of a square there. And so I think that's just something I wanted to bring towards the council just to make sure that when we put this in that there's some consideration for how we're going to cross that to get to our neighborhood schools. Um, you know, something like a sky bridge going over it because it's going to be a five or seven lane uh, road. It's going to be a big deal for our community and we're only a tiny wedge so it's something pretty important to us. And then secondly on that map, there's a section put off for the technology corridor or camera how it's referred to in the map for a, a tech business. I know that sounds flashy and everyone's trying to get that into their community, but I think that that part of the land is right on the bench and it's probably some of the most beautiful land that we have in our whole city and maybe in the whole valley. The whole east side's built out. I think reserving that for a business that we're going to probably end up having to give hundreds of millions of dollars of tax incentives to get to come here is a mistake and I think we should reserve that for our residents going forward. So I'd encourage you to look at that map and see if there's something we can't do to make that technology corridor happen somewhere else in less prime real estate and not, and I, I, I appreciate your, your work on with the Facebook deal, recognizing a, a poor choice when it came, even though it was a hard decision to make to, to make that. I think that was, that was a good thing for our community and just encourage you just to take a look at that and make sure that really is the best thing for us. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Colette Fletcher to 5114 South. Um, no, sorry, West Fuchsia Circle. I just want to echo the sentiments of Kathleen that I too am upset that um, the denial of Council Member Jacobs to be able to um, participate. Nichols, sorry, <laughs> that's my councilman. Um, Nichols to be able to participate electronically. I think there's something egregious to um, deny a member to be able to do that. I agree with council member Jacob that if we have the means to do that, we need to be able to do it to have as many council members available to vote on issues as possible. Thank you. Anyone else? I will close the citizens' comment and move to the consent calendar. I've had no one asked to have anything pulled from the consent calendar to this evening. Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve all consent items. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember McConaughey and a second by Councilmember Jacob. Discussion to the motion? Seeing none, let's vote. Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Councilmember Burton? Yes. Mayor Rolfe? Yes. Councilmember Jacob? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. The vote passes five in favor. I've had a request to move the one business item, 7A, up ahead of the public hearing items. Um, so unless there's uh, opposition, I plan to do that now. So we are business item 7A, discussion and possible action regarding resolution 17-142, approving a partial assignment and assumption of development agreement regarding lot two of the station at Gardner Mill subdivision from Gardner Village LC, Joe Long manager, to the station at Gardner Mill LLC, Paul Colosimo. David Brickey. Thank you, Mayor Council. Uh, you may recall, uh, at least some of you will recall, that this came before the Council in May of last year. One of the questions that Mr. Long at the time could not address was whether or not there was adequate funding, financing, to assure that the project would be concluded once started. Uh, the Colossimos, who I believe are present here this evening, have provided through their Council, Mr. Poole, verification that Zion Bank has in fact stepped in as that lender, and I'm trying to move to the page in question. Uh, 
And you'll see in that July 7th letter signed by Flynn Dawson, Senior Vice President of Zion Bank, they have assured that the station at Garden Mill LLC for the completion of 272 units of multifamily project, a loan of approximately $36,400,000. I will not indicate to you that I represent in any way that that's an adequate amount. To do that, I will leave that to the discretion of the Colossumos to confirm that. But I do believe it is substantially much further along than what was previously presented in May. So if requested, I can share my further considerations of what I think would be appropriate at this point as far as the assignment. The assignment also has some additional terms that weren't considered in May. That is, if there is some, for some reason, Colossumos are unable to finish the project, Zion Banks actually steps in as the party to be able to finish. It doesn't revert back to Mr. Long. So we'll have a financial stable entity ready to step in should that unfortunately happen. But I thought um, I would like to clarify that. Um, if need be, I can answer any other questions. I know Mr. Colosimo is also in the back, if need be. Questions from Council? Council Member Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I have, uh, I was not on the Council when the, when the project um, was originally presented to the council. However, I do have, um, in a previous employer, I did lease space from a similar project called the Village at River's Edge in West Valley City. And I, I didn't have any issues there as a, as a tenant. Um, I, I would, I would uh, hope that the Clausimos could work on uh, commercial the, the commercial space that's there um, and, and have some good solid uh, businesses that, that come into this facility. Uh, but as a, as a tenant of several years, as a commercial tenant um, at the village at River's Edge, I, was, I don't have any, any issues with how the, the management team ran it. Uh, it was well kept. And that's just, that's just my experience in a previous life with, uh, with a Colossimo project. And I just wanted to, to mention that. Thank you, Mayor. Council Member McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I've been <laughs> voting on this project since, pretty much since I started on the council. Um, I've expressed my opposition all throughout, um, up until the point where I was in the minority, but the majority of the council approved the project. Then there was an amended plan that came back that was better than the one that had been approved. So I did support the improved project over the one that was already out there. Um, Anyway, uh, I don't have any objection to allowing for the assignment of this. I just want to point out that we're not actually talking about any changes to the development agreement. Nothing is going to be changing to that. It's just saying, is this assignable to somebody else? Should there be a, a need to do so? Um, in my mind, although I'm, I'm not the biggest fan of the project, um, I think it's appropriate to make sure that there's a safeguard in place to make sure this gets carried through to completion. I'm flashing back to um, my days as a, well, fl flashing back over to uh, a development over in Sandy on 13th East and about 7,800, yeah, 7,800 South. Um, on the east side, there's a, a hill where they had a nice development that was planned, and there's an elevator shaft that sits there, and that's it. I really don't want to see something like that happen in West Jordan, where a project started and then not completed. Therefore, I will speak in favor of uh, what's been proposed. And if there are no other comments, I, I saw a microphone come on from uh, our city attorney, so I'll, I'll hold my motion till, till then. Well, I can tell you that uh, Zions Bank has stepped forward, and I know Mr. Colosimo has a check that's burning in his pocket to turn over to the city for building permits in excess of $1 million. Is that accurate? The assignment really doesn't change any development agreement terms. It really puts the burden, it transfers all of the obligations that were responsibility of Mr. Long clearly onto the Colosimos. So frankly, until this assignment happens, um, the Colosimos aren't on the hook. I think in I have an opinion that if you agree to pass this or allow for this assignment, the Colossals will have to start running tomorrow. 
Council Member McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. So before I make a motion, I'll make the quick comment that the building permits, the fees associated with that have no bearing on, on my decision at all here. I'm indifferent there. Um, but I do move to approve resolution 17-142, which authorizes the mayor to sign the partial assignment and assumption of development agreement for the station at Gardner Mill subdivision. Councilmember Anderson. I will second that. I have a motion by Councilmember McConaughey, a second by Councilmember Anderson. Discussion to the motion. I'd just like to state that I voted against this project in every uh, vote that was held on this project. I never believed it was the right project for this site. Still don't, but uh, the majority of the council passed this, and I will support this motion tonight. Let's vote. Mayor Roth? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Councilmember Burton? Yes. Councilmember Jacob? Yes. The vote passes five in favor. Public hearing item 6A, receive public input and consider for approval ordinance 17-38, authorizing adoption of general plan amendments for potentially 1,700 acres generally located in the southwest portion of the city within and adjacent to the established Pioneer Technology EDA, City of West Jordan. Scott. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, this has been uh, work uh, that we've been, been uh, focused on for a while. Uh, we're going to keep Ray busy this evening. I'll have him present the, the history and the details of the various options. And uh, just as a, as a reminder that there's a, a temporary land use ordinance uh, over this general area that is uh, going to expire on the, I believe, the 16th of this month. So uh, we would ask the council to consider uh, action tonight on, on these proposals. Ray? Ray? Thank you, <clears throat> Mayor, members of the council. Uh, again, back in July of 2016, city council did create the Pioneer uh, technology District Economic Development Area, and that was through the adoption of the resolution number 185. Um, I think that, that expires on the 12th, tomorrow, or 13th tomorrow, doesn't it? I think it expires tomorrow. I may be wrong. But anyway, um, the to look into this uh, this area, it's... Uh, step on this. The area that we're talking about is, is right here. It's, this is the southwest corner of the city. Um, and the EDA, sort of see this red line here that's kind of dashed. This is kind of the area of boundaries that we're talking about. Um, on the overhead, I've got just a copy of showing the current land use map, the general plan. And just kind of the, the, the bigger items is that the light manufacturing area is here is just south of the New Bingham Highway, so it's contained within this area. And the rest of it is pretty much uh, a mix of residential uses with some public facilities that, uh, for future schools and things. Um, the City Council did create a, a joint subcommittee to kind of take a look at this area. And uh, that was with the uh, members of the Planning Commission, though some of you served on that, that subcommittee. Uh, out of that subcommittee, we did hold a subcommittee meeting, and out of that subcommittee uh, meeting, we did uh, came up with a couple of options for you to look at that are in your packets, and, and uh, so I'll go through those changes this evening. Um, I can toggle back and forth through this if you have any, uh, you know, if you need to, to do that. Um, the first map that we were looking at, and I, th I think one of the things that I do need to mention is back in 2012, when we were looking at the the general plan, we did recognize that this, we weren't quite sure of, of what the appropriate land use uh, were going to be down the road in this area, but I think time's come now to really take a good close look at that. Um, and I, this will uh, this will help facilitate that. We, we call this option number five. Uh, this is what the Planning Commission recommended approval of. The changes to this plan, 
major changes were basically the, this area right here is along the New Bingham Highway. Um, in the current plan, it shows the light manufacturing is here, but that's now, uh, or the general, or the subcommittee had thought that the New Bingham Highway made a good uh, solid buffer or a boundary between the industrial uses and the, the residential uses to the north. So that was, the light manufacturing is basically extended uh, all the way to the, the corner here of the, the city limits. A couple of other changes that were made to the map um, were along the UN11 corridor and uh, we, the subcommittee actually added a, an area of professional offices along U111. And on the current land use map, it shows a mixed use area, which is here. Uh, that's been changed to a, a professional offices. And then what we did is on the old, the current map, we have medium density residential that the border is U111. And that's been now pushed um, off to the sides with uh, a transition in the land use, you know, so low density, uh, very low density, um, and it also goes the, the same uh, to the east as well as low density. Uh, the subcommittee also looked at putting in maybe some community commercial to uh, let's go along here, maybe a convenience store um, to help serve the residents and then the light industry and the manufacturing area. Um, and so those are the major changes. Well, the other change would be to the research park area up here, which is kind of the uh, northeast area. Um, the subcommittee thought that it would be uh, a good addition. You've got good access here along 90th South. Um, it's in close proximity to the commercial uh, node that's here on U111 or 90th South. Uh, they also looked at putting a future park here, which could serve the, those that are working here at the research park area, um, and then also the residents here. There, on the current land use map, there's also a future park that's shown here. Uh, that's been shifted over to the east, to I think the Echo Ridge subdivision, closer to that, so it creates more of a buffer here. Uh, these dots that are shown on the map are basically water tanks, um, three or four acre sites. So that was uh, option number five. There was another option that was developed um, as part of that, that effort, and we could call that option number six. Um, here along is, and I hope I got this correct, <laughs> but um, what we're looking at is, uh, is basically light industrial here south of New Bingham Highway. And then uh, on the entire <coughs> West Branch along this side, would be developed as, as research park. Um, with this, this, the school has been shifted to, the, uh, to this area. It's in the residential area. This is pretty much the same along here. So those are really the, the two options that were developed from this subcommittee. And we recognize that, again, this is kind of the crystal balls, the future land use maps, what um, the city council looks at when they're making land use decisions, zoning property. And so, um, the, you know, these, these are uh, the options that have been developed and you're certainly welcome to, as part of this process to change those if you so choose. So with that, um, so these, these are two maps. You're welcome to, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have or uh, we'll go from there unless you've got anything to add, Scott. Well, if I could just add a few, few more comments. Um, as we looked at these various land uses, we also studied the topography, um, both with in mapping and going out to the to the locations, uh, driving around, and and uh, we do have. Uh, I, I would I would look at it as a very positive aspect to that area uh, west of U111. Really uh, slopes uphill, and it provides some some beautiful views of the valley, and so we took that into consideration. Option six that you see there on the on the map, that's roughly a little over 300 acres of business research park. To put that in perspective, that's roughly the same size as the research park up at the University of Utah. So uh, hopefully that kind of gives some perspective to, to the, the acres we're playing with. Um, in addition to that, uh, I know we've got a lot of residents here, and they typically don't have a lot of interaction with 
land use and zoning and all of these things and so just to, to clarify to the residents that the the future land use map is, as Mr. McCandless has indicated uh, is, is a long-term outlook we're not talking about specific zoning entitlements tonight uh, the, the the land use map the future land use map that you see on the slide uh, provides guidance for um, for staff and the council as we look at at actually developing the property so I just wanted to make those those points thank you so <clears throat> just a couple other points just as Scott was mentioning that we did look at the topography when we developed initially the, the initial land use map and as you can see that there's a uh, you know, parks and open land here but that's and there's another one here um, and then there's also these uh, drainage channels that go through here which will be our open space connections um, on <clears throat> on option number five there was uh, some interest in developing some of uh, this is very low density residential up along the foothills for you know the larger estate lots single family residential so that's one of the reasons that that very low density residential was, was put at that location questions for Ray, Councilmember Burton. Thank you, Mayor. The research park. Could you help me understand how a research park is similar but different than professional office? The research park is is going to be again very similar to what you see up at the the University of Utah. It's the larger building that's with the large setbacks. The professional office buildings are more clustered. Um, they. Uh, they're on typically a little smaller lots, have the typical landscaping, but it's kind of a, uh, with the research park, it's more of a campus setting uh, than you'd find in your professional office districts. And what are the advantages to the city for having a research park as compared to a professional office? I think the research park tends to draw the larger, um, the larger companies. Um, they <coughs> It's, uh, it provides uh, just a kind of attractive place of employment, uh, but like I say, it's just a little different uh, looking, and I think they, they do more of the, um, the, the technological kinds of, of uses versus a professional office where it's just basically office-related uses. So they're actually manufacturing things um, and then distributing them, uh, doing research development. So those are kind of the differences between the two. Are they typically more stories to a research park building? No, not necessarily. Uh, if you look at research park, they might go three or four stories. I think the hotel up there is about four stories, but um, professional office is about the same. And we have a condition we use out for added stories in the professional office district. So I don't see a lot of difference between the two. Thank you. <laughs> Council Member McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to have to be careful as I share my comments because I want to save my opinion for after the public hearing but I want to answer some of the whys before um, I had an opportunity to participate with a committee that helped put this together and kind of want to explain the thought behind uh, option number six so first of all option number five I'm very much on board with this and I like the idea I like where it ends up getting us um, but I want to be really really careful as we look at low density residential on those foothills, that, is, that really is some prime real estate. And I wanna make sure we do it right and there are no mistakes. Um, looking at some of the residential development we've had west of U111, when we zone it residential, we, we've seen some issues. There's a development that's going in that we thought we had a fantastic opportunity. And instead of go, the developer, instead of going the PC zone like we were hoping, they said, well, we'll just take the residential and just build out what's allowed here. So we don't even need the city council. We'll just run with it. We had a fantastic opportunity, but it's not going to pan out. We've had that happen a couple of times. So that's why um, with option number six, uh, if you could jump over to that one, most of that residential does not appear on this one. I'm not saying I'm opposed to the residential. Rather, I want us to go out, physically walk through that area and say, here's where we think the residential should go. Here's the constraints that need to be set around it. I almost want to set some of this aside as a PC zone um, rather than residential so that it's forced to come to the council to meet the specific criteria that we're going to set. I don't want us to miss an opportunity with some of the last foothills to develop in the valley. I think we have a huge, huge, huge uh, opportunity here. 
The other thought is with the research park, I didn't like how limiting we were on research park earlier. I want to see something similar. Uh, growing, growing up, my dad worked for one of the companies that has their corporate office up at Research Park up by the U of U. And that was kind of my thought process behind this. I'd go up to visit him at lunch, and we would just walk outside of their uh, little cafeteria, and you're on the shoreline trail. You've got deer and moose and other wildlife that are just coming right up. Well, granted, that's not always the safest thing in the world, but it's fun to have that interaction with nature. I want to have some property in West Jordan that we can market to companies like REI and say, you guys need to have your headquarters out here. Uh, going the tech direction, how many GoPro cameras do we have in, in Utah? We should try and make a push to get them to locate some of their facilities out here. Um, out, there are a lot of companies that I think would be well suited to look at something like this uh, for their corporate offices. Also with Research Park, I'm looking at the company I currently work for is a tech company and we currently are based out of California. There's six different buildings on, uh, I'm not sure how many acres, but a nice green space. I want an environment that creates a, a draw for something like that. When you start looking at the topography, we have opportunities for something like um, an outdoor amphitheater that's on the side of the hill. There are a lot of opportunities we have and I don't want to say well, let's just zone it all residential now because I worry that we're going to let those opportunities slip through. So I wanted to go with more research park so that we could preserve that. And if somebody does come with those opportunities for residential, then at that time say, yes, let's go plan community and, and address that. So that's why option number six has so much research park. The other thought behind that is we put a lot of work into setting aside that 1,700 acre um, CDA, RDA, CDA, EDA, EDA. <laughs> throw some letters out there eventually I get it right. We have that 1700 acre EDA. I don't necessarily want to erode any of that at this point in benefit of residential. I want to make sure that we have a good balanced development for the city. I want to make sure that we have the commercial. I want to make sure that we can draw those business parks in. I want to make sure that we have everything nicely balanced because right now we're so heavy on the residential. While I agree this is a prime place, there's going to be fantastic views, some very high-end homes that can be built out there. I didn't want to do it quite yet. So, And this is where I'm crossing that line of sharing. I might be coming up on the line of sharing too much opinion versus um, waiting for after the public to share their thoughts. But that was the thought process behind option number six. The, the bulk of the group really was supportive of option number five. This is me kind of going rogue and saying, well, I'd like to present another option to the rest of the council. But that, that was my rationale behind option number six. So thank you. Council Member Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. I too, uh, I, I do like uh, option five. However, uh, Council Member McConaughey has echoed much of my sentiments in that I think option six provides some opportunity uh, with the research park. My concern with option five in research park is that it's not big enough to attract a good large base of business that could be in, in uh, that space of research park. And I'd have to look up what the acreage is on that one. I think it's 100 and 125, and then the option six is 300 acres, similar to what's up at the U as, as has been mentioned. And I think having a, a larger component of Research Park will allow larger businesses to see this as, as a home for their corporate office. So th those are just my thoughts. You, you echoed much of what I wanted to say, but you, you do it so much better than me. Uh, but that's all I have. Thank you, Mayor. I will now open the public hearing for item 6A. If you're here to speak on this item, now would be the opportunity. Just as a reminder, state your name and address for the record. Trent Jarman, 8949 South Soli. And the technology, the businesses, the city needs it. I understand that part. Opening up 90th from New Bingham to 6400 West 
is going to create a lot more traffic. You're going to create a neighborhood that is going to be just an island in the middle of two busy highways. Um, and a lot of kids walk to school along that path and cross 90 South where it's closed right now. I've got two such kids here with me tonight that by opening that, they've got friends that are going to be stuck in an island of busy roads. Your wide intersection there is a dangerous intersection. Um, it's going to cause a lot of speeds. I drive a patrol car to work. I drive down 90th South. I constantly pick up cars coming towards me with my radar at 60 miles an hour from 40th West past the highways. And you're going to put that in the neighborhoods? Please rethink opening that section of 90th and try to do other things. Anything else would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I will close the public hearing for item 6A and return to the council for discussion and or a motion. Councilmember Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I am very much in favor of option 5. Uh, if for no other reason, then we have no very low density residential in our city. And our general plan does call for a variety of housing types, and this sets some aside for that. Um, I'm also not in favor of using Research Park as a holding zone, as far as uh, let's zone it this now and we can change it later to very low density residential. Um, this is the option the Planning Commission recommended, which is another reason why I'm in favor of it. Uh, just for clarification for the residents that are here, we're not necessarily discussing roads tonight. All we're discussing is what goes where as far as as far as land use, and that's all it is. Um, we will definitely come to that point where we do talk about where the roads go and and how they uh, intersect and, and where the lights go and all that stuff. But that's not where we are yet tonight. Um, I'm very, very much in favor of, of option five. It's what the majority of the committee or the subcommittee uh, preferred, and uh, I'd, I'd like to move forward with that. One of my uh, goals I stated many moons ago when I first was involved with the Planning Commission was I'd love to see a neighborhood in West Jordan where we could get a Utah Jazz player to move to. Uh, we don't have one yet, but I think this could be one. Uh, right now they're living in Walker Lane or they're living in the avenues, and uh, we don't have that neighborhood here. I'd love to have a, a multi-million dollar home neighborhood, and I think this could be it. Thank you. Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, my, obviously I'm supportive of option number six. Um, as far as Research Park as a holding, or kind of a temporary holding zone, um, agreed that's not the purpose of it, but that uh, overall would be my intent for that portion of the city until we have some chance to go out there and physically walk this, look at it, figure out where could we put some of those other options. I don't want to zone the southern part residential and then come back and say, oh, that's one of the pot spots that would be prime for uh, an amphitheater, um, and then realize that it's too late. What we've seen with other um, developments on the west side is once we zone it residential, there's there's no coming back. You can't make any corrections. Um, the only reason I'm supportive of doing anything at all is because we have that hard date of July 16th where we have to have something in place and applications can start flowing. So I don't want that to be um, set up to go straight to residential. Again, um, I think I think we've already shown historically, not this council, but historically as a city, each time we've done that, we've we've missed the boat on fantastic things that could have happened, and there have not been any changes or safeguards put in place to to prevent that from happening again. So I'm I'm very much in favor of number six. Additionally, I want to um, thank uh, Mr. Jarman for the comments about 90th South. Um, I had not thought about that before. That's exactly why we have the public hearing, because obviously you're going to bring up things that we may not have considered. Um, I know in other areas of the city, we've had to look at how to reroute streets. Uh, you look over by Copper Hills High School, we've shut things down and rerouted things. So I think there are different options that we have to protect that neighborhood while still opening up for development. So 
Um, I just want to know that 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 did have an impact on me, and I will I will be remembering that. So thank you for your comment. Um, not seeing anybody else's light on, I would make a motion that the city council adopt the changes to the future land use map as shown in option number six as presented in this report. I'll second that. I have a motion by Councilmember McConaughey, a second by Councilmember Anderson. Discussion to the motion. Seeing none, let's vote. Councilmember Jacob? No. Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Councilmember Burton? No. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Mayor Roth? Yes. The vote fails three to three. Three to two, sorry. Councilmember Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve, oh, I don't have the recommended motion in front of me. I move to approve option five. <laughs> that would be on ordinance 17-38, right? That's the one. Okay. <laughs> I will second that for discussion. So we have a motion by Councilmember Jacob and a second by Mayor Rolf. Discussion to the motion. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I understand the need for uh, good quality, low density residential. My concern, the only concern I have really with option five is it's too much housing. Um, my emphasis personally is economic development, bringing business into the city. And we have to have a balance of commercial and we have to have a balance of residential. My concern with the 145 acres, or is that 135, 145 acres in this option for Research Park is I don't know that it's big enough that we're going to attract the large companies like an REI. If we can set aside a good chunk of space so that we can land some large businesses and then their employees can buy these homes, these low density residential, medium re density residential. And then we've got a balance between commercial property tax, we have a balance of residential, and it will help with the east-west transportation. There's just, there's just so many good things about option number six. And that's, those are my comments. Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, while I disagree with Councilmember Jacob, I, I just appreciate the open, honest conversation. As you can see, there's a lot that still plays out on these um, as we're here on the dais. And since I started talking, Councilmember Burton's light came up. I was actually going to ask him if he would share the, the thought process behind the, the, the no on six. I've already shared my, my reasons, and we've heard most, but I'm just really curious to hear there. Thank you. Councilmember Burton. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Councilman. Mine goes a lot of similarities with Councilman Jacobs. The other one shows no, very low density. And I would be fine if we could mix the two of these, make the research park bigger, but still get some very low density, because the other plan shows no, very low density at all. And I think it would be good for our city to have some very low density. So I'm just trying to get some of that in there somewhere. So if we want to move that research park still south some and still keep our very low density, I would be happy to meet that compromise. Councilmember McConaughey. Oh, uh, could we go back to option number six, Scott? So what if on this we were to change, uh, you'll see the top section, top left, we've got the research park and then we've got low density. What if we were to put very low density right in there? Um, well, we're, sorry, where it's low density residential right now, if you can move that. Yep, change that to very low density. And then just to the right, straight to the right, this square, not going all the way down, but just from that kind of green line that's just below. Uh, stop that. Yeah, so medium density residential from there up change that to low density So we have low density next to the professional office very low density and then we have the research park right there my thought being um, 
again, I want to be out there and us as a council walk this and talk through this together because I think we're all going pretty much the same direction. And I think once we're out there and we're actually standing out there, it'll be a lot easier to come to consensus. But I, I don't want to risk losing anything right now. Additionally, um, you'll recall that we've got a meeting scheduled with the Planning Commission coming up, the, I want to say, August 29th, where we need to review with them the rest of the future land use map, not necessarily this section on its own. The reason this section is being considered is because this is where we have that EDA. Yeah, EDA. Um, but there is additional land on the west side of the city where we can look at putting that low density residential. Because I wholeheartedly agree, um, not just low density but very low density is, is very much needed. We are missing that element. However, uh, again, we have an opportunity with this EDA that other cities don't and the, the timing of when this was put together, it doesn't have some of the same restrictions that exist for others. So, Again, I'm really hesitant to give up any potential value from that EDA in favor of residential, but I'd be happy, excuse me, I'd be hesitant to do that without being out there walking the land and making sure that this is what we want in the long term. I don't want to be making that permanent decision of going to residential off of a two-dimensional map. So how would the feeling be if we were to change that low density to very low and that medium to low or so you're me. making that a substitute motion because we have a motion on the floor you have the opportunity to make a substitute motion at this point okay councilmember Burton thank you mayor so councilman McConaughey as I look at this what I kind of have in my mind is and this is probably not a good time to make all these adjustments is this area right around here Backs up to the foothills and make that the very low density area here. I don't know if it's a problem separating the research park. I'm not familiar well enough to do that. If we have some research park over here, over there, or if we want to move there. This here isn't quite as beautiful as you talked about walking it. I don't usually walk, I usually bike it. This is still nice, but there's some other things that make it less nice. This right through here is really nice. This We've got some good slopes and some good things right down through this area, right through there. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. I do uh, appreciate Councilmember Burton's comment about the very low density housing. Um, and yes, I'm. I could go either way. I, I try and think of uh, the vistas and the different views and where they are located. Um, but I, I would be supportive of adding some very low density. Housing. I don't know what that percentage would be. I think there's advantages to what you're saying with the the bluffs that are uh, with those nice views and vistas there at the south end. I also am cognizant of what Councilmember McConaughey is suggesting, a little more centrally located, a little closer to a, a business district uh, where they can shop. Um, so I'm I'm probably supportive of of either one. I don't know if that's uh, we can make those modifications uh, all tonight with hard lines, but I think I, th I think the concept is there. And those are my comments. Thank you, Mayor. Councilmember Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, my main concern with the size of the research park is the size of the research park. I think you get a much larger research park when you're next to a world-renowned university that has a cancer center and a hospital, and all of the things that are up there. Uh, you can you can justify a 320-acre research park. I don't think we can build a 320-acre research park in these foothills. Uh, that's just from a practical standpoint. That said, I, I am a great big fan of the uh, idea of compromise. Can you uh, switch back, Scott, to option five for me? What if we swapped the research park and the very low-density residential on this map so that there is more research park and it encompasses, and again, I'm like Councilmember Burton, I'm out here a lot on a bike. Uh, I know this area very well. Um, I would invite anybody who would like to go out and walk it. I'm happy to go with you. Uh, but I'm, I'm out here all the time. This is not far from where I live. So um, anyway, that's an idea to swap the research park, the very low density, and even maybe some of that low density residential could go to Research Park as well, up to kind of the top of that hill. 
as you go toward Copperton down on Newbingham Highway, you kind of go over a hill and then downhill into Copperton. Um, maybe do the research park on the west side of that hill and keep the low density residential on the east side of that hill. Um, just as a as a thought, but just as a as a compromise to maybe eat into a little bit of the research park for that very low density residential. Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I want to go back to respond to Councilmember Burton's comments earlier about uh, doing the uh, the low density resident, very low density residential on the south side. Uh, the reason I'm pr primary reason for opposition is I really want to look at what other world class facilities we can we can add out there. As you're looking at that those green kind of blobs that are on the left side, the parks and open land space, those are grades of over 30 percent. And there's not much regular development that can happen, but as we're looking at planning out facilities and parks and different things for the folks who are on the west side of the city, I would love to see us have an amphitheater, kind of like what you see down at Thanksgiving Point or even Sandy or some of the other uh, amphitheaters that are out there. I don't want to put residential all the way around it and have a bunch of folks coming in for something cutting through residential neighborhoods. So that's, that's my primary reason for wanting to hold off. Again, this isn't, I, I don't intend for this to permanently all be segmented off, but until we have the chance to go out there and say, yes, these are the various amenities that we want out there, we can spend some time focusing specifically on this area and say this is exactly how we want it to play out. Um, I'm still in opposition to just adding additional residential out there. Um, I don't want to, A, I don't want to jeopardize the opportunity that we have with the EDA, and B, like I said repeatedly, every time we put residential out on the west side and we've just zoned it residential, we haven't forced it to go the PC zone or something like that, it's not come out to the standards that we expected. So that, that's why I'd be in opposition to number five. I would be okay playing with some of the zoning for the residential that's already there in number six. But, but, but just so you can see my thought process and where I'm coming from, again, I'm not in opposition. I would love to see us have these nice homes on the west side, nice walkable neighborhoods. I'd like to see us include some, uh, res or some uh, what I've been calling walkable commercial so that there's, there's, there's shopping within walking distance. We, we don't have that aspect out there yet. That's something that's also missing from, from our future land use map in general. But that, that's the thought process and kind of the vision that I see for that portion. Um, as far as um, the research park and a research park being justified where you've got the university and you've got the Cancer Research Center and all those other things, while the university was there first, yes, um, Research Park was already there before the Cancer Center came in. In fact, the reason my dad, uh, well, never mind. Uh, the Research Park was there before a lot of these other amenities, or before a lot of these other businesses came in. So we can't necessarily set the vision based on what we see right now in the relatively short term. This has to be long term. What do we imagine this will look like in 50, 80, 100 years from now? And, and I, I don't want to limit us based on the, based on a little two-dimensional map without being out there in person. So um, I, I would be opposed to option number five. Thank you. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Mayor, for letting me speak again. Again, this, this for us, the five of us here tonight, is a 30,000-foot view of how we see this portion of West Jordan shaping out over the next several decades. Um, there's nothing that prevents the state of Utah from adding a satellite campus to the University of Utah or some other university. There isn't anything that prohibits um, Utah State or any other private or public university from opening up satellite campuses somewhere and having enough land set aside where something like that could happen and build a research park uh, around a satellite campus. So I'm hoping that the five of us up here are looking at this from a 30,000 foot view over the next 20, 30, 40 years of how we want this space in West Jordan to look, which is a huge responsibility for us up here. And I do agree with, with the comments of some very low density residential, um, but, I, but I do support option six over option five from the standpoint of I think we really need to have a 300 acre research park for the future. Thank you, Mayor. That's all.
We are now voting on option, option five. five. Councilmember Burton? Yes. Mayor Roth? No. Councilmember Jacob? Yes. Councilmember McConaughey? No. Councilmember Anderson? No. The vote fails two to three. Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, more of a question probably for Scott as to where that leaves us come 8 a.m. the morning of July 16th. I'll show you exactly. That's where we, that's where we would end up. Uh, let's see, this is that current map. Yeah, that's the current map. Now, we don't have any developers um, knocking on the door wanting to develop, develop this property. The great thing about any land use change, whether it be the future land use map or zoning, there's a lot of discretion that the council has. And so just because someone files an application does not require the council to, to immediately adopt that. If, if uh, we go through the findings and you feel that it is not consistent with, with the vision of the city, then you can, uh, you can deny that. Um, I guess another option that the council may consider tonight, and Mr. Brickey's looking at the actual uh, temporary land use ordinance and whether or not we can extend that. Um, if we cannot extend it, and it does sunset in a couple days, then uh, we can we can still regroup and uh, and work on land use out here. And like I said, there's not a lot of uh, interest at this point in time for, for development that far west. There's not a lot of infrastructure, and so uh, I think that's, that's one of the primary reasons. And if the council decides to adopt a, a more restrictive uh, version, you know, you could, you could do a huge blanket of business research park and then come back in a month and amend it. It's up to your, your, your discretion. I don't know if that answers your, your question, Councilman. I just, so we could put the whole 1,700 acres, what you just described, into a business zone and preserve it and change it in one month, six months, 12 months. You could. That's your, your, at your discretion. Because it's already preserved, the whole 1,700 acres. Correct. And that would, that would place it in a protection for yeah. for a fallback for tonight. I still Correct. hope we can get to a, a decision on one of the two uh, issues. Councilmember Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. Um, gosh, it sure would be a good idea to put a subcommittee together to discuss this and come back with a recommendation. But we tried that. Um, I think that's the purpose of a subcommittee, though, is to come back with a recommendation. Um, not everybody's going to like everything on, on any given map. Uh, it, I think we should come together based on what the recommendations have been by the subcommittee and by the Planning Commission and support what, what was given there. That said, it's not a perfect plan. There is no perfect plan, and I'm open to compromise on that. The uh, second thing I'd like to mention is it sure would be nice to have a sixth vote right now, um, just for the record. And the third thing that I'd like to mention, I just forgot. So I'll come back to that. Councilmember McConaughey. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, trying to figure out how to pull my thoughts together. So, yeah, we did have the subcommittee. I appreciate the. I, I recognize the tone with which those comments were delivered, and frankly, it's it's a little frustrating. Um, I. I Yeah. Um, knowing what the recommendation was going to be coming from the committee and knowing that I was in disagreement with that recommendation, that's why I asked for something a little bit different. Um, I thought it was easier to start with something to have something prepared rather than try and do everything at that point in time. Also, it was very evident that the committee was not looking at things through the same lenses that we have to look at this as a council. 
I was completely on board with option number five until I had a conversation with another member of the council pointing out that the reason we're looking at this area is because of that EDA that we have here and we want to make sure that we can preserve any opportunity for economic development. When I switched and took off the glasses from the subcommittee and looked at that from the bigger perspective of let's look at economic development for the entire city. Let's look at the potential we have with that EDA that's out there. We have a 10% advantage over anybody else in the state. It would be foolish to give that up um, without having a well thought out reason to do so. So while I appreciate what the committee did, and ultimately I really like the vision that was presented, that vision wasn't quite big enough and we're not quite at a point where we can pull the trigger on all of the, the, the details, specific lines. When I say details, I mean the placement of the residential areas. I don't want to give up possibility of getting some of these larger companies coming out to West Jordan because we thought, hey, we can put 12 or 25 homes out here and, and find we miss out on a big opportunity further down the road. Until we spend some time actively in detailed, in detailed planning of this area, I don't want to do anything that's going to jeopardize our future options. I want to make sure that we have as many options as possible. Um, having said that, um, Council Member Burton, you sounded like you might be off, open to some different modifications. Is there some sort of modification to option number six that um, would help convince you to support this option to, to preserve as much of that EDA as possible? The answer is yes. And as I mentioned in my earlier comments, my biggest concern is there's no extra load density. So if we can work some of that into there, I would be willing to, to go with that. I'm not opposed to the research park. I'm just opposed to not having any low density, extra load density in that somewhere on those foothills. So if we wanted to change the shape of that a little bit, I would be game for that. And then put some extra low density in there. So do you want to change the shape of the area or are you okay changing the, the content of the boxes that are already out there? So if we look at this, and you, right there where it says the public facilities, if, right there. And the area south of that, if we make all that research park there and then go up where the research park is north of that line and make that the low density, very low density residential there, I would be happy with that. And we could adjust those to get the acreage closer, but I think that would be good. And we have the, that right up there against the foothills. And that area that I do there is very terrainish. And I think that would work good for that. So on here, the issue that I would see with that, on the bottom section, straight down of where the pointer's at right now, that low density residential. So you're suggesting that would become Research Park. And then we would have a weird island strip of medium density residential right between Research Park and Professional Office. Right. Yeah, I, I meant to that whole section part to be research park. So everywhere from that line where the pointer is right now all the way to New Bingham. I really just meant low density but that would be acceptable that way too. So then my question for Scott would be that section right now up at the top that's uh, listed as research park instead of going very low density are we able to zone something as planned community without there actually being an applicant? No, there has to be a detailed development plan. So we'll take note of it and uh, hopefully uh, as it, if it develops out as, as a residential or even a mixed type use, we'll, we'll steer them towards that if that's the, the goals of the, of the council. If I may, if we do go this direction, uh, I would recommend uh, to the council that this public facilities, which is a proposed future elementary school, be located north if we're in, in more 
uh, just uh, adjacent to any future residential instead of the research park. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just so I'm understanding this map correctly, uh, the upper research park stays research park. That goes very low residential. Research park stays at the, the south end and goes to the east. Is that correct? And public facilities would move north of where it is now, somewhere up in there. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Burton. Mayor, may I make a motion to this? That would be in order. Okay. So I move that we accept ordinance number, do you have that number in front of you? 17-38. My computer died. 17-38 with the provisions sketched on our display. Could I request that someone take a photo of that with a just cap? Thank you. Second. We have a motion by Councilmember Burton, a second by Councilmember Jacob. Discussion of the motion. My only discussion is I would like the public facilities to be in the area that shows low density, not in the area that will be now very low density. You can make that happen. And I will support the motion. I would happy to be in my motion to reflect that. If you okay, the second would apply as well. Yeah, in the low density portion, not the very low density portion. So we have an amended motion by Councilmember Burton and a second by Councilmember Jacob. Discussion to that motion. Councilmember Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I like this. This is a good compromise. Um, I want to apologize to Councilmember McConaughey. It was not personal. Uh, it's procedural. Uh, that when we have a, a subcommittee, when we have any vote, we always have discussions. We're never going to always agree on anything. Um, so I apologize that it came off personal, was not intended personally. Um, I just am, am very much a proponent of moving forward, of having discussions and having outcomes at the end of those discussions. I have this frustration at work, too, when I go into a meeting and we spend an hour discussing things and we leave the meeting where we entered the meeting. And so uh, I, I apologize. Thanks. In the interest of time, we still have many public hearings. Can we, could we hold our comments and vote, please? Let's vote. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Jacob? Yes. Mayor Rolf? Yes. Councilmember Burton? Yes. Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Vote passes five in favor. Thank you for restricting the comments. Appreciate it. We've got a long night ahead of us. Public hearing item 6B, receive public input and consider for approval ordinance 17-39, amending the 2009 West Jordan Municipal Code, Title 13, Section 13-5C-4, to include vehicle and equipment repair limited as a conditional use in a PC zone, citywide applicability, Halley Properties, LLC, Scott Former, applicant. Scott? Thanks. I'll turn the time over to Ray to, for a quick summary of this uh, request. The applicant is also here if you have questions, but I'll turn it over to Ray first. So the applicant is requesting that uh, Section 35C-4 uh, of the City Code be amended um, to allow what we call vehicle and equipment repair limited in our uh, the city's planned community zoning district. Uh, they're looking at a, a, the applicant's looking at a site that's, in, that's part of the Stone Creek development on the corner of 7800 South and 5600 West. Um, it's important to just kind of get an understanding of what vehicle and equipment repair limited actually means. Um, it's motor vehicle repair maintenance services. Um, but it excludes paint and body shops. 
uh, but it does allow for things like electronic tune-ups, brake, uh, brake repairs, air conditioning repairs. It's a little uh, more intensive kinds of, oops, uh, more intensive kinds of things like transmission and engine repairs, generator and start repairs, tire repairs, front end alignments, and those kinds of things. Um, so when you're looking at, <coughs> and we took this to the planning commission. Uh, the planning commission, after some discussion, um, as reflected in your your meeting minutes, um, there was some discussion uh, or some concern allowing more intensive businesses might be an issue and or might open the door to more intensive kinds of uses in those planning community uh, zoning districts. Um, but the planning commission ultimately decided uh, or felt that through application of the conditional use permit that we can mitigate a lot of the impacts we typically see with, with those kinds of things. And things you know, talking about noise and where to store the vehicles and those kinds of things. So <clears throat> I think they were, they felt comfortable with um, going ahead with uh, allowing that. But they did put uh, a caveat in that and <clears throat> the planning commission said that it's uh, allowed, they put an asterisk here in the PC zoning district but only if immediately adjacent to an arterial street and if not included in the residential development. So as long as they're on the, the busy arterial streets and through the conditional use process, they feel comfortable with, uh, with adding that to the, the list of permitted and conditional uses. So with that, I'd answer any questions that you have. Councilman McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in the packet, it shows that uh, in the end, the Planning Commission issued a favorable recommendation, but there was one who was unopposed. Um, in there, uh, there's a comment saying that Commissioner Green was going to provide a report explaining the um, opposition. Was that ever was that provided? <clears throat> I haven't seen anything. I believe he submitted it uh, as part of the the minutes. Um, I. Don't believe I actually saw that report myself. Uh, I believe he he submitted it to uh, Julie Davis, who is going to incorporate that. Um, so I, I wish I could provide that, but I I don't recall seeing that. Okay, thank thank you. The planning commission minutes that were provided to us are absent. Um, it, it just stops with a comment saying that the, those were going to be provided for the minutes, and there's nothing else. So, thank you. Thanks, Ray. I'll now open the public hearing for item 6B. If you're here to speak on this item, now would be the opportunity. My name is George Bies. I'm the civil engineer for Hollick Properties on this particular site. I'm here with Howard Hammond, who is an assistant vice president for Discount Tire. Discount Tire, yes. And if we can answer any questions for you, we'd be happy to answer any specific questions. Questions from council? Looks like you're good. Thank you. Thank you. I will now close the public hearing for item 6B and return to the council for discussion or motion. Councilmember Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, anytime, I think, in my opinion, anytime we can allow more uh, more uses in more places, it, it's a freedom issue for me. Uh, I, I like this, especially when there's a potential conflict that we make a conditional use. Uh, to me, it, it crosses all the T's and dots all the I's. So I would be in favor of this, and as such, I would move to approve Ordinance 17-39. Second. A motion by... Councilmember Jacob and a second by Councilmember Anderson discussing to the motion. Councilmember Burton. Thank you, Mayor. The uh, auto repair shop, although I read in there they wouldn't be having vehicles stored outside overnight, that they would put them inside. And it's not uncommon to have an auto repair shop in an area such as this. So I'm not going to speak in opposition to it, but I want to express some concerns because they're not as clean as other businesses. Even some are better than others, but some are not as clean as others. And they do make noise. 
mostly with an impact. Things are going. The compressors are doing a lot better now than they were. So I like the idea that they're putting it adjacent to an, to an uh, arterial street, which I think helps because that street would probably make more noise than this business wheel. So I will be speaking in favor to this, but I just want to note that I understand there are some concerns, and there should be some concerns in the business this close to residences. Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll actually speak in opposition to the motion. Um, there are other zones where, where this seems more appropriate rather than in plan community. Plan community is meant to give a variety of uses, but it's, at least from what I, well, in the interest of time, I'll, I'll keep my comment short because I'm likely in the minority on this one. But um, it seems like it's a change that's being requested for one particular um, development, and I'm not sure how this would really benefit the city as a whole to allow this uh, across the board for all PC zones when there are other zones that seem would be much more appropriate for this type of business than, than a PC. So um, I'll be in opposition. Thank you. Let's vote. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember McConaughey? No. Councilmember Jacob? Yes. Mayor Rolfe? Yes. Councilmember Burton? Yes. The vote passes four to one. Public hearing item 6C, receive public input and consider for approval ordinance 17-40 amending the 2009 West Jordan Municipal Code Title 13 use tables to add independent elderly housing, nursing homes, assisted living centers or similar uses in a PO and or other zones city citywide applicability city of West Jordan applicant. Scott. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, this is uh, essentially a cleanup item related to a, um, an ordinance that was passed not too long ago. Um, I'll turn it over to Ray to uh, give a brief summary. As yeah, Scott mentioned, this is a, basically a cleanup item. <clears throat> As you might recall, this came back or came before the, the city council to allow um, independently elderly housing, nursing homes, assisted living centers, in the professional office zoning in the district through application of the SHO. Uh, what we needed to do is the thing we overlooked was actually plugging um, that conditional use in the table of permitted and conditional uses for the PL, the professional office zoning district. So this does that just to make it clear that it's that it's an allowed use in the PC zoning district or the, the PL zoning district um, as a conditional use. Did that make sense? <laughs> Questions? Thanks, Ray. Thank you. <laughs> We'll now open the public hearing for item 6C. If you're here to speak on this item, now is the opportunity. Please. Alexandra Ephraim of 3735 Judd Circle, uh, West Jordan. I'm a little bit confused. Where is this? Are we talking about a specific location? And what is the location? Is this it, by it tracks? Have, it will have citywide applicability if this change is made. I'm sorry? That, it'll be throughout the city anywhere oh. in this zone. All right, not specific. Change is made. Yeah, all right, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? I will close the public hearing for item 6C and return to the council for discussion or motion. Council Member McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Seeing as this follows up on our other conversation, and personally, I think assisted living, independent elderly housing, nursing home, things like that are more appropriate for the uh, PO or for the P, yeah, P PO than the uh, other for the. Well, I can't talk anymore. Move to approve Ordinance 17-40. Second. We have a motion by Councilmember McConaughey, a second by Councilmember Burton. Discussion to the motion. Councilmember Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, just as a by way of explanation, I'll be opposed to the motion because whereas I did just state that I like allowing more things in more zones, 
This is a housing issue in a non-housing zone, so for, in my opinion, it doesn't fit. Um, so I'll be voting against, as I did in May when we saw this the first time. Thanks. Let's vote. <clears throat> Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Councilmember Burton? Yes. Mayor Rolf? Yes. Councilmember Jacob? No. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. We'll pass this four to one. Public hearing item 6D, receive public input and consider for approval ordinance 17-41 amending the 2009 West Jordan Municipal Code sections 15-3-1, 13-7C-4, 13-7C-5, 13-7D-4, -7 13-7D-5, 13-7D-6, 13-7D-7, Dash seven D dash seven land use and zoning map and text amendments citywide applicability West Jordan applicant David Bricky. Thank you, Mayor and Council. The City Council had a joint meeting recently on uh, May thirtieth, uh, at which point the Planning Commission and the Council suggested there might be a better way to handle map amendments and to set about establishing a quarterly schedule. So that has been what is being proposed here. It provides for um, certain dates and opportunities for uh, the Planning Commission to group uh, those ideas all at one time. Uh, there was at some point a discussion of having them twice a year. The Council indicated four times a year, so that's what's being proposed at this point. Um, if this is not meeting with your expectations, any feedback on um, why doesn't accomplish what you wanted would be greatly appreciated. But if there are any other questions specifically, I don't want to waste time. I'll turn it back over to the council. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, I will open the public hearing of item 6D. If you're here to speak on this subject, now's the opportunity. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing for item 6D and return to the council. Councilmember McConaughey. Move to approve ordinance 17 41. Councilmember Burton. So, sorry, I'll wait for a second, then I'll have some discussion. I will second for discussion. We have a motion by Councilmember McConaughey, second by Mayor Rolf. Discretion to the motion. Councilmember Burton. Thank you. This is where I want to come in. My concern is, if we pass this, is it going to increase or decrease our ability to work with developers and our timeliness on getting work done within the city? I fear that this may slow things down and back things up so we have more things happening there and then kind of have an extra workload that's going to come to the council after it meets with the with the uh, commission. So I'm very hesitant on this one for fear that that's not going to improve things in the developer's eyes, but make things look worse in the developer's eyes when they want to get some work done and some changes done in the city. Uh, before we go to the next comments, you stated this is what the council requested, right? That is correct. Um, the thought was that was shared, I think at the time, Duncan Murray was proposing that rather than piecemealing each quarter, each meeting, by doing it quarterly, you would have an ability to look at a larger portion of the city and control how that growth or how that development looked. Um, it would also, I, I don't dare venture into Scott's arena and tell Mr. Langford what that timing uh, issue is that Councilman Burton addressed, but perhaps can you address that? Could I just ask a question? Doesn't this allow the council and the, and the planning commission to get together and uh, change certain uh, areas uh, based on the discussions between the two? Is that that was the intent and having these sort of common dates and in, in, uh, previously set so that you would all know when and what quarterly would be happening? Hey, Scott, if I may, too. Um, as I read through this uh, uh, proposed ordinance to Councilman Burton, uh, 
it does give staff it does give the council discretion that if if we have um, a sponsored change uh, that we could go ahead and and expedite that and put it on the, the next available agenda per noticing requirements um, we just have found that uh, our, our future land use map is just it, it doesn't really mean a whole lot to be quite honest is at every turn we get developers that come in and they say well we'll just do a land use map amendment and rezone and and we see that almost on every single agenda and we lose the the, the context of all of these uh, small changes when you add them all up it amounts to a huge change we we uh, <clears throat> need time to study impacts on on other land use on the the transportation networks on the uh, the utility infrastructure on the parks uh, the level of service for our parks and so we we uh, feel strongly that if we group them in, in in a general context we can make better decisions overall and we will not look at this ordinance as an excuse to slow anything down but rather look at things holistically and, and overall make a better decision uh, for for the city Councilmember Jacob, thank you, Mayor. Uh, this is this last like two minutes has been very good for me because I have exactly the same concerns that Councilmember Burton has, and I had exactly the same thought that Mr. Langford just uh, said. On the one hand, the city uh, I have been told has a reputation of being difficult to work with, especially our planning department. Nothing personal. Uh, this is what I've heard. Um, so anything that that exacerbates that, I'm hesitant. However, we have also said we don't want to roll over on every land use uh, change that comes up. And we were just talking about a big old land use map amendment uh, just a minute ago, and we argued about it back and forth, and we came to a nice, I think, a nice compromise. We all voted on in the affirmative, so I think it was a nice compromise. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of torn on this one as well. I don't want to slow things down. I don't want to make it difficult. However, I also want to put some more teeth into our future land use map. So I could kind of see both sides of this. Uh, I was very much leaning against it until what Scott just said. Um, I, I, think it's, I think it's a step to give the future land use map more teeth, and I think that's something that we want as a, as a council and as a staff and as the planning commission um, recently. So I, I, I believe I will be in favor of this. Thanks. Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Um, is it possible to really quickly go back to option number five on the overhead? So what I want to call out on this is that little island of medium density residential that's floating kind of in the middle of nowhere. You've got light industrial. Uh, this is the one smack in the middle of the screen by the future park just to the east. Nope, to the right. That's already there, the existing neighborhood. Keep going to the right. Right there. Down. Down now. Down. Yeah, right Stop there. right there. Mm -hmm. That little neighborhood right there, they're sandwiched between, the, the, there's, a, there's a little island in the middle of industrial. This is the kind of thing that I worry about. Um, in a production environment, the thing that really sucks your time are the changeovers. If you're manufacturing something, it's changing um, your equipment to go from one thing you're producing to something different, then going back and forth and back and forth. I worry about how much staff time we're losing in the changeovers. Um, you can go back to the uh, document that was being shared earlier. Thank you. Um, if you're looking at the propose, proposal that what we have, on paper it might look to developers like we're proposing slowing things down and only hearing things quarterly. No, we're proposing putting some sense of order in there because right now staff is just jumping for whichever, whichever customer is um, screaming the loudest and whichever is the hottest issue with the council. So somebody else is getting put on the back burner. So overall, it may seem on the front that we're slowing things down, but we're not. We're putting an order to it that will allow us to have more volume move through in a faster fashion. And this is just smart production, regardless of whether that's processing information or manufacturing goods and services. Um, th this is the right way to do it, to set up the schedule saying, here's how we're going to minimize our turnover time. And additionally, it does allow staff to look at things more holistically so we can avoid issues like that neighborhood that's stuck out on this island in the middle of nowhere. So I am very much in favor of 
this ordinance. Thank you. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I'm supportive of it. However, I do have some pause, um, and it's probably just on language. And, and I know we talked about it in our combined meeting with the Planning Commission and with what Scott has said um, on the second page of the ordinance, suggested ordinance, under summary of ordinance for map and text amendments. And you'd kind of mentioned, Scott, that, uh, that they would have, there might be a little flexibility, but I think the wording that we're using here uh, creates an issue where this, this is pretty much set in stone because the uh, first sentence there under part I, uh, first bullet point, applications for land use map amendments and zoning map amendments, which are inconsistent with the land use map, shall be placed on a quarterly map meeting agenda. So there is no flexibility, um, which which I don't know that I can support that because I think we we need to have a little bit of flexibility because I do concern I do have concern that if I bring a, a a plan at the beginning of the new year, first week of January, I'm 120 days before the council's going to, or I'm sorry, before the planning commission's going to hear it, and then after that, I could be soonest available meeting could be the second meeting in April. I'm sorry. Planning Commission's the last meeting in April, so the earliest I could possibly have it heard by the council is five months after I bring my application in. So if we take shall be placed on a quarterly map out, then it kind of negates being quarterly. So maybe what we do is shall be placed on a quarterly map meeting, and now that I see it, you know, at the combined meeting, we're just talking and brainstorming. Now I see it, and I could be five months to get my land map. What if we did it every other month? We did it six times a year. I know that's two more than what we're doing. But if we're going to do shall be placed, which kind of makes it a demand that it's only going to be held quarterly under this provision, there's no, there's no out to, to help a developer. It's you brought your plans in January. The city council earliest are going to be able to hear you is May. And I'm just wondering if we leave the shell in there so that we have some pause, we have some, um, some ability for the Development Service Department to look at things holistically, that we can maybe speed it up a little bit and not have this appearance of slowing the flow, so to speak. Uh, I, so those, those I don't understand what you're asking. Uh, if someone comes in with an application and they meet the um, land use designation, that they don't have to, they, they streamline right through. And if we change in joint meetings and, and make it official every quarter, that, that land use will change, of course. Right. But that doesn't have any factor on, uh, I've stated this, uh, I'm not trying to, the developers are not going to design our city for us. That's what the Planning Commission, those that set aside the uh, general plan, and the council do. And so they can walk in day one, January 1, and if they meet the land use designation and they can start their process, and it, they're off to the races. This is only, if, correct me if I'm wrong, this is only to allow the Planning Commission and the Council to meet and change those land use designations as they see fit. Is that right? That's correct. So the, the, the restrictions would be placed on the future land use map. So what you said so there is So it could correct. change after that meeting, after we ratified it. Right. It could change, but if they walk in prior to any change, uh, there's nothing stopping them from uh, no. doing anything. So if it complies with the with the future land so use this map, this is just the future land use map. If their zoning matches the future land use map, which should be the, the goals and policies of, of the city council, then boom, they're they're okay. right through. Thank you, thank you for the clarification. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that uh, that was understood. Councilmember Burton. Thank you, Mayor. I'm concerned about the perception, and if we can keep that perception from making it look like we're making it more difficult, to make it more easily, I would support this. So I will support this at this time so we can move that forth. But I also don't want to put the perception out there that we're doing this because it's just too difficult to do it otherwise, because I don't want the People who are trying to use the city services told that, no, we're putting this off because it's just too much work for us to serve you right now. We just want to make sure we understand the purpose we're doing it is to keep the, the, the track clean and keep it coordinated. So I 
somewhere I read in there that we said it's just too much time for this to serve the people. We don't want to. That wasn't worded that way. That was the, the impression I got as I was reading it. So I want to keep that impression out there. But I will be supportive of this. Councilmember McConaughey, final comment. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to underscore what you said earlier. And the only thing that I would uh, specifically call out and emphasize on top of that is that we really want developers to follow what we've laid out in the future land use map. Although we acknowledged earlier today that there are some issues and some things that need to change, if somebody comes and complies with that, fantastic. I have no issue slowing somebody down if they specifically want to go against what the council has said is the plan for the city. I'm, I'm perfectly happy giving the perception to developers that we don't like that. We prefer when you go with a plan. If you go with our plan, we'll let you sell right on through. If you're going to go in opposition to what has been stated as a set direction of the council, you will be slowed down. Um, I would be fine even even though that won't, this will not do that, and I think it will streamline things and speed things up. Um, if that's the perception that they get and it encourages them to comply with what the council has already set out, I am more than happy with that. So I'm obviously very much in favor of the motion. Thank you. Let's vote. Mayor Ralph? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Councilmember Burton? Yes. Councilmember Jacob? Yes. Bill passes five in favor. Public hearing item 6E, receive public input and consider for approval ordinance 17-42, approving the temporary turnaround easement shown on lot 208 of Bloomfield Estates, Phase 2, located at 8477 South, Maple Water Drive, 5900 West. Scott? Thanks, Mayor. Uh, point of clarification, uh, this is, uh, we're, we're, the request is actually vacating the temporary uh, turnaround easement. Uh, it was just uh, an error in the, uh, the agenda itself. The ordinance and the report are correct. Uh, this is just a case where th this is the, the quickest and, and uh, the, the, the uh, cheapest way to get rid of this temporary turnaround. Um, if you're familiar with it, I don't have a, a, a slide of it, but uh, there's a little dead end sub. Uh, it's less than 150 feet and therefore, uh, per the, uh, the, the requirements of the fire code, they do not need that temporary uh, turnaround. Um, and so. Uh, Per state law, uh, this is the quickest and easiest way to get that easement vacated and a home built on that lot. If I can answer any additional questions, if you have any. Everyone's clear on a vac this is a vacate, not an approval. Yeah. Thanks, Scott. Uh, I will now open the public hearing for item 6E. Anyone from the public wishing to speak on this item? I did have one person sign up and I will read this. We are, against, we are against the temporary turnaround on lot 208 of Bloomfield Estates, phase two. I will now close the public hearing of item 6E and return to the council. Council Member McConaughey. Move to approve ordinance 17-42. Second. I have a motion by Councilmember McConaughey, a second by Councilmember Burton. Discussion to the motion. Seeing none, let's vote. Councilmember Jacob? Yes. Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Councilmember Burton? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Mayor Rolfe? Yes. Vote passes five in favor. Public hearing item 6F. Receive public input and consider for approval Ordinance 17-43 to vacate the City of West Jordan's abandoned public utility easement on two parcels of real property located near the common city boundary at, at or near 6676 South, 1300 West in Taylorsville City and identified as the Sidwell numbers 22 excuse me, 21-22 dash 427 dash 012 and 21 dash 22 dash 427 dash 013. David Bricky. Thank you, uh, Mayor and Council. Uh, this is property that is no longer being utilized by the city. Uh, you'll see at the very last attached document to the um, attachments is the property 
currently Mr. Uh, Reynolds, president of the uh, construction company there that uh, is going to be utilizing that area, that they have some concerns that if it remains in the city's possession. Um, so at this point, uh, I, I don't know that there's an interest unless you folks tell us to retain it, and then that's certainly within your right. Thank you. I'll now open the public hearing for item 6F. If you're here to speak on this item, now's the opportunity. Last chance. <laughs> Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing item 6F and return to the council. Council Member McConaughey. Move to approve ordinance 17-43. Second. We have a motion by Council Member McConaughey and a second by Council Member Anderson. Discussion to the motion? Seeing none, let's vote. Councilmember Burton? Yes. Councilmember Jacob? Yes. Mayor Wall? Yes. Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Vote passes five in favor. Councilmember McConaughey, you had some remarks for the end of the meeting? Yes, I did. Thank you. I was looking at my notes, and next up I had business item 7A, and then I realized, wait, we've already done this. <laughs> um, this goes to uh, what Alexandra brought up earlier, the time for the meeting on Friday to discuss fireworks. Um, I would propose that we try and do it sooner rather than later, late night on a Friday, um, <laughs> right after we've had a busy week with the 4th, uh, to be kind to staff. I, I think the earlier the better. Um, I can be available pretty much any time after 1.30 p.m. Um, so I would ask, is there a time that works for the majority of the council? Uh, Councilmember Jacob. I could be here by 5 p.m. I, I do need to work. Um, work goes up. To, I usually leave work around 4.30, and it's in Lehigh, so I could be here. I, I could be here by 4.30 if I had to, but any earlier than that wouldn't, wouldn't work for me. Um, 4.30, 5 o'clock would work for me. I'm not in the office two days this week, and I need Friday to onboard some employees. 5 o'clock okay for everyone? That makes it so you can make it, both of you? So we'll make it 5 o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> we just need direction on that, right, Melanie? Yes. Okay. Okay. Oh, Mayor? Yes. There was one other item I wanted to talk about, which was uh, streaming of meetings. Uh, with the new technology, we have the capability to, to stream some of those meetings. Um, personally, I'm not sure I'm wild about streaming the video of us up here on the dais. I'm fine with the recorded audio. My big concern is I want people to be able to see what shows up on that screen over there and also have that information archive because many times we have something presented to the council that um, doesn't make it into the packet. When we look at the streaming options, every once in a while somebody will send me a link. Uh, I'll be, I'll be uh, talking about maybe a disagreement I had with somebody on the council and someone will say, hey, you think you have it rough? Check out this city council. And they show something on YouTube in complete disarray. I really don't want to do anything that would cause us to go viral. So. Um, while we have the capability of presenting the video of us sitting up here on the dais, I don't necessarily think it's all that pertinent to what's, to, to, to what's visible. I would like to give direction to staff that we record and stream just the portion that's visible on our screens right now. When we do have somebody participating electronically, I have no objection to having those other boxes viewable here in council chambers so somebody could see that up on the screen in here. But for what's kept as a public record out out there in perpetuity on the internet, out on our, our YouTube videos, I would prefer that we keep it to the content relevant to the discussion of the meeting, which is the presentations that are up on the screen along with the accompanying audio. Um, and, and I would propose that we offer that direction to staff, to IT, as they're, they're moving forward. But uh, obviously I'm just one voice, so I'd like to know what the majority think. Councilmember Jacob. Thank you, Mayor. I actually would like to see the whole thing streamed. Um, 
I think as long as we behave professionally, we won't. We don't have to worry about going viral. And between the five of us that are up here, or usually seven, but you know, we're uh, we're not that exciting. I think there's only five of us that watch, or five of you that would watch it anyway. Uh, there's not that many. And it, for me, it's a transparency issue. Uh, I am all about making us more transparent as much as possible. So uh, if we invite people to come in and sit here, and if they had their phones, they could sit here and record us anyway. Uh, we might as well be as transparent as possible from, from our lookout. So I would be opposed to just limiting it, but uh, definitely including what's shown on the screen in that streaming uh, if and when we get to that point. Councilmember Anderson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, th I think we're okay just having the wide shot of the council. Um, I do agree that it's... To me, it's not exciting to see just a picture of City Hall, which we've had on, on several of the topics. Some of the other cities that I'm familiar with, uh, when I worked at a Chamber of Commerce and I attended their City Council meetings, and they have been streaming for a number of years, um, is they have an employee who's able to push a button and change the camera views, and as well as include the screenshots when they're doing planning and zoning, or what we, all the things that we did today. So for me, I think it's beneficial in a spirit of transparency, a spirit of openness, uh, that we facilitate the public need with the means that we have. We have cameras. We have the ability to, I'm assuming, put the screen into the broadcast, into the uh, um, stream. I don't see the cameras zooming in on each of us like it's a newscast. Um, so I'm I'm fine with it being open and and what I would say is we figure out a way to have somebody that can switch the camera, someone that can put the screen into the feed so that we're professional, we're top notch, we're a first class city, and that we're open and and we're on camera. We're not going to do something silly. I don't think. That's my opinion. Councilmember Burton. I agree with Councilman McConaughey. I would be in favor of streaming the audio and putting on the pictures of whatever is up on the display on the screen and going to that, that, that step. I'm of that same opinion. Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. So my recommendation then would be for the next meeting we see if we can't do at least that as a starting point and then when we have the two other council members here see if there's additional direction to add on top of that. I think anything is better than what we have right now um, and since we're not, this isn't really an agendized item that we're voting on, we don't necessarily need four in, four in agreement to move forward on that. But uh, I, I would ask the question, is there opposition if we as a council move forward with sharing at least the audio and the video on the screen on our recorded sessions and, and streaming as, as we start moving forward? Would there be opposition to giving that as official direction to staff? Okay. And then obviously we can always come back and revisit that. So thank you. Those were the only two items I had for remarks. Thank you, Mayor. I need a motion to move to closed session for the discussion of character, professional competence, or physical or mental health of an individual. Strategy session to discuss pending or reasonably imminent litigation. Strategy sessions to discuss the purchase, exchange, or lease of real property, including any form of water right or water share. And we will adjourn from there. Councilmember McConaughey. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, giving us a five to ten minute break prior to that, I would move to proceed as you outlined. I would second that move motion. We have a motion by Councilmember McConaughey, a second by Councilmember Burton. Discussion to the motion? See none. All in favor? No, 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 oh, no. Oh, that's right. We need a roll call vote. Let's vote. I'll keep you guys in line one day. I thought we were going home already. Sorry. I know. I'm sorry. Mayor Roth? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember McConaughey? Aye. Councilmember Burton? Yes. Councilmember Jacob? Yes. The vote passes five in favor.